Hey guys, how are you doing today? This is Toby from Toby Rail Touring. Just wanted to introduce you guys to the channel. I know we did a video about eight months ago. Uh, that was when we just got our bike, so we wanted to show you guys what we were working with. Well, since then, naturally with a bike tour, I've learned things will change drastically. Um, things such as Tony getting a new bike, um, new gear coming in. Uh, I just have a lot to show you guys. So that's gonna be the purpose of this video right here is we're gonna do a A to Z gear list walkthrough. Um, I'm gonna go through my suitcase, show you guys my bike. It's actually packaged up right now. And I'm gonna try to let you guys know the pieces of gear that I've chosen, why I've chosen them, and how I think they're gonna be beneficial to me on the bike tour. So stick around and enjoy the video. All right guys, so this right here is my main carry-on suitcase. This has got all my camping gear in it. It's got all my clothes in it down here in the basement of the suitcase. Um, this thing is pretty incredible. Uh, it weighs around four or five pounds, so it's a heavier suitcase, but it's able to hold all your stuff in there. And the main thing, especially on a bike tour, when you are traveling, um, you want to have everything consolidated the best you can. So I'll have this, this right here as my main carry-on piece. Um, and then along with my bike box, which shout out Delta, they only charge, I think like 40, $40 to $50 to bring, um, your bike as long as it's under the box is under 115 linear inches and under 50 pounds. So if you can keep it under that, it's perfect, um, for an airline that'll be bike friendly. So I got my bike all sandwiched in there. And uh, I got it professionally packaged by a bike shop. I couldn't do this myself. Um, but yeah, it's got my helmet in there, my Brooks saddle. Uh, a few other little things jammed down in there. I think my, uh, goodness, what's it called? My handlebar bag. So yeah, I got that thing secured with some Velcros right here that I got over at Lowe's. That's easy. It just shuts like that. So TSA can open it up and look through it and shut it. Um, and if they want to add tape too, that's awesome. But yeah, I got it, both of these boxes and this bag, they both weigh under 50 pounds. Bike box is under 115 linear inches. So this will actually fly as a check piece of luggage. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go through all this. So for this first section of how I'm gonna break down what I'm packing, I'm gonna try to do it in a section such as camp gear, you know, sleep system, cook system, clothes, uh, just to make it a little bit more organized. So first I'm gonna start off with my sleep system and this was probably one of the most tedious and expensive parts of preparing for a bike tour because you want a tent that is first off waterproof. You want a tent that is light, you know, anywhere from four pounds and under. Uh, and they start to get a little pricey when you get to that ultralight range. Uh, but you can find some good ones on sale on websites like REI, Backcountry, uh, even used gear from websites like Gear Trade are excellent resources to find good price backpacking tents, bike packing tents that you may not be able to afford full price. So first off for me, I'll go with my tent, which is the Big Agnes Tiger Wall Ultralight 2. And this is a tent that is, I believe, right under four pounds. I think it weighs about three to two and a half somewhere in there. Um, I could be wrong, I don't have the exact weight. But this thing is super light and it compacts down to just this uh, tiny little sack. So I'm able to just pop this into one of my rear panniers and hold on to my tent. And this thing is waterproof. I've done as good a waterproof testing as I can, which is shooting uh, the hose that I have, shooting water over the top of it, and no water got inside. So. I have a footprint for this tent also um, by Big Agnes that should keep the floor of it pretty um, tear-proof and secure. So I'm really excited about this tent. Uh, I've read great reviews on it. Um, and for a lightweight tent, this seems to be the way to go. So the Big Agnes Tiger Wall 2. Second in my sleep system is a good air mat. And this one right here is a climate insulated static five. So this right here, super light, seems really solid. I've blown it up. It's actually got a little valve on the side where you can blow it up with your mouth so you don't have to worry about any kind of pumps or anything extra to bring. Um, 
and it's perfect. It's got a 4.4 R value. Uh, so that means that in any kind of cold weather situations, this thing will insulate you from the cold of the ground, which is something really cool um, that you want to look out for, especially if you're going through any kind of mountainous regions, which on the Transamerica tour, um, you will be going through the Rockies, you'll be going through Yellowstone, those areas where it just never really seems to warm up. And uh, so you kind of want everything you can that's going to help you stay warm out there. Um, this is actually a piece of gear that my friend recommended to me, and this is just some Amazon brand called Outdoor Essentials. Um, it's a sleeping bag liner. So what this thing actually is, is just like a sheet from your bed, except it will go in the shape of a mummy sleeping bag, and it pretty much just keeps you from getting your sleeping bag super stinky. You know, you're going on a long ride, you're sweating, you don't want to get into your sleeping bag that you just spent a few hundred dollars on with all your sweat and just getting it all in the cloth. Because for one, sleeping bags are hard to clean and this is just easier. You pull this out and you throw it in the laundry and uh, it absorbs all the sweat instead of your bag. So yeah, I have this out of the bag, but this is my sleeping bag. It is a big Agnes Yacht, zero degree, zero degree Fahrenheit. So this should keep me comfortable down into the 20s. Um, which I'll probably experience in some of the Rocky Mountains and Yellowstone. Um, but yeah, Big Agnes just seems to make some real high quality products and I really became a fan of their brand. I've slept in this thing before. Um, I think it was in like 35 degree weather and I was toasty in it. Um, so I'm excited for this thing. It's pretty light. It's only like three and a half pounds. So this next up on the list is going to be my cook system and a few other little kitchen items. Uh, and it pretty much boils down to a few little essential items. Uh, starting off, I'll keep all my camp cook stuff in one of these little Osprey dry bags. Uh, I think this one is, yeah, three liters. So it's pretty small, but it holds your pot and um, towel and everything else pretty well. <clears throat> starting off, uh, I got a Topeaks, or no, this is a Tokes. Uh, see how many milliliters 750 milliliter titanium camp stove pot uh, in here I got a little bandana you know wiping off the uh, pasta sauce off my mouth but yeah this thing's super light boils on my water in it um, perfect for boiling water for coffee in the morning water for noodles stuff like that in this little bag I've got my little camp stove. Um, this one Coleman makes. Got it at Academy. It's around 30 to like 40 bucks. Um, but it's worth it. You know, this thing's super light. Again, one of those items that's kind of non-negotiable, especially if you're going to be camping most of the time. You just got to have it um, unless you want to go eat out every meal, which can definitely get a little bit pricey. Next in the camp cook system is one of these little pack towels. And this thing is awesome because it breaks down into this little bag and comes out is a really cool little quick drying towel. All right, next up, I have my Tokes Spork. Um, this is another little item that's super light, but I feel like you can't go without. Um, and you definitely pay for the titanium. I think this thing, this little spork is like $10, but it's titanium. You're gonna be able to eat all your meals with it. It's the one piece of silverware you need. So for washing all of my dishes off, I'm gonna use this stuff right here. It's called Camp Suds, and it's a really awesome brand that's uh, all-purpose cleaner. It's made with citronella, lavender, peppermint oils, and it's biodegradable, so this stuff is great for the earth. And then the last few little items I have are just kind of miscellaneous kitchen items. I have a coffee mug right here. Um, it's just a little metal one. Kind of has been beat around a little bit from past trips, but yeah, I got a little carabiner on it so I can attach this to the outside. I'm just driving through somewhere, you know, want to make a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. It's just right here. You grab. It's easy. It's from Walmart. Then I have a big old Sea to Summit um, dry light towel, um, microfiber, um, packs down in a super tiny. And this is more of a regular size towel. Um, but again, you could use this for your kitchen setup if you're wanting to lay out somewhere that's kind of dusty um, out in the woods, but you want to have a clean cook area. I'd count this as a kitchen item, but really it can be used if you're bathing, um, whatever you want to use it for, washing off your bike, you know, you can use it for all those things. Next up, I have my little Ziploc bag of 
different um, bottles. Uh, you know, they could be used for sauce, olive oil, uh, little things right here for ibuprofen, maybe some Tums. Cause you know, you're eating out there, all that camp food, you don't know what it's gonna do to you. You might, you might need a little bit of medication. And this is a cool item that I actually learned from another YouTuber. Um, shout out Darwin on the trail. He uses these to cold soak a lot of his meals. And this is just a little Talenti gelato jar, or it's like a little ice cream, fancy ice cream. You can get it at uh, any of the Walmarts, Targets, wherever. And this is cool because it's super light, it's plastic, you don't feel bad if you break it. And you can fill this thing with couscous, you know, a number of other little items that you can cold soak and then throw your stuff in there, put a little water at the start of the day, seal it up. And by the time you get to lunch or dinner, you've got some couscous or whatever ready to eat for that. This item kind of stands alone. This is a Sawyer water filter. And I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about these things. Um, they are just notorious in the uh, backpacking world and uh, bicycle touring world for saving people, especially if you are out in a remote area and you do not have access to clean water and you need to filter quick. Um, these Sawyers are incredible. Uh, filtering your water down to a healthy drinking level is essential, especially if you're on a bike tour that's self-supported. Um, I got one of these bags, uh, they're called Platypus, um, and it's a different reservoir. It just seemed like one of those cool little things. It was only a few bucks and it just seems to be, you know, better built than the ones that Sawyer has that come with it. And it attaches right into the end right here. So you dip this bag down into a stream, whatever, fill it up with water and you just kind of squeeze it all into your bottles. Camelback insulated bottles. I got two of these big tall ones and then whoop, and then a shorter little Camelback insulated podium, which it just seems podium means short in some other language. All right, next up is my two little pieces of fun camp furniture. This is a compact folding chair. So this little, this little guy right here comes into that and it's a comfortable seat after a really long day in the saddle and you just pull it out of this bag, pop it up, and you have yourself a comfortable seat. For a more on the fly seat, I have this little foldable foam pad um, that just kind of accordion folds into this little guy and it weighs nothing. So, you know, you just attach it and you have attach it to your bike and you have a comfortable little seat that you can whoop, grab off, unfold, take the load off. Next up is a staple of bike packing, bike touring gear, and that is going to be my panniers. Um, I decided to go with Ortlib. Um, these are so common in the bike touring world because these things are totally waterproof. They just look clean, they look nice, and they fit on the bike so well, and they fit on so many different racks. Um, they attach really simply back here, which is this little hook system, and uh, with this little whoop, pop it up and it opens these latches and it just sits on top of your rack. Really not the school bus yellow ones. Um, so these things are a little bit bigger than the front ones. Uh, I can't remember how many liters, but yeah, these are some classics right here. Um, I like them a lot. So I like the wild colors too. That's just kind of what I gravitate toward. Uh, same kind of system on the back for locking to your rack. This right here is probably the bag that I love the most uh, just because this brand is just awesome. Um, they do all sorts of wax canvas stuff. It is Frost River and this is a frame bag right here, uh, but it's awesome. It's got these leather straps right here that hold on. This is like a really pretty handmade wax canvas. <clears throat> and I have this right here for storing my maps. for the Trans Am. Got all 12 in here. Love following these old school maps, but you know, I got my trusty GPS too, just in case I can't do that. Got a little uh, body glide anti-chafe in here. And then I got my tent poles. So that's what the frame bag's for. Oh, and then I think on this side, I got some instant coffee packets. Shout out Starbucks via Pike Place. All right, next up, I have my little trinkets. Um, 
these things include, you know, little writing uh, devices, knives, multi-tools. So yeah, let's get into that real quick. For writing, I really love these Ride in the Rain journals. Um, I have two of these and these are gonna be pretty much journals for each day on the trail. Um, I love writing, so being able to talk about each day is a great way for me to kind of just vent, explain, remember things that happen in the day-to-day -day on the tour, um, which is something that I think I'll look back on and I'll end up really treasuring these. And it also has a fun little write in the rain pen um, that's perfect for writing on that kind of paper and it uh, comes down to nothing, so yeah. And then I have this right here. This is pretty much gonna have, you know, daily mileage, getting phone numbers, tips, things like that while I'm out there. Um, Cause there's people that you might meet out there that you wanna connect with again and call them, tell them thank you when you finish, if they offer you a place to stay, things like that. Tools, um, I went with this Crank Brothers M19, I think is what it is. Yeah, the M19 tool. And this thing right here has a chain breaker on it. It's got a few little Allen keys. Um, it's got a Phillips head, flat head, star bit, uh, pretty much anything you'd need for your bike. Um, I mean, ranging from eight millimeter to shoot down to three. And I think there's one that's less than that. Um, but it's got all your little tools on there that you would need while you're out there. And it comes in this really nice compact little case that whoop, just breaks down real easy. Next up, I got my knife. Uh, I go with a Spyderco Delica 4. And, you know, there's a number of things that you need a pocket knife for. And if you don't carry one, you need to just start carrying a pocket knife. Because these things right here, man, they are the unspoken heroes of life. Like, you're going through your day and you need to cut through a piece of fruit. You need to open a box. You know, whatever it is. Boom. It's done. Next, I have this on my keychain, but I will be taking it off. It is a Leatherman Micra, and this thing is awesome. It's got a little pair of scissors on there. Um, it's got some, shoot, it's got a knife. It's got a uh, little nail filer. It's got a lot of little fun things on there, and it's just such a small, out of the way piece that it, it has to go anywhere that I go. Well, I found a few other little odds and ends, so I figured I'll go ahead and bring those up too, and I have them all right here. <laughs> um, this is Gorilla Tape right here. It's a smaller roll of it, um, but this stuff is amazing. It can come in handy, you know, the least expected at times. Uh, you never know what you need duct tape for. It's kind of the Redneck's favorite tool, and so this Gorilla Tape stuff, just great brand. Um, it holds really sturdy, and you never know when you might need it, so it's worth having out there. This right here is incredible. This is a cork massage ball. And after a long day, your legs are shot and you don't have a masseuse there. That's where this comes in. You just pop it right down on the leg and start digging in there and you can work out cramps, sore muscles, whatever it is, and it's super light. Pedro's tire levers. I have dealt with several different brands of tire levers um, and having flats and Pedro's are just the strongest, beefiest, best tire levers you can get in my opinion. Uh, this is just a simple little piece that I've had for a really long time and I kind of put it on all my bikes. Um, this is a bell mirror and it's got this little guy right here that never seems to fit on the forks that I have. So I usually just end up using some of that Gorilla Tape just to clamp it around enough and then have a mirror that I'm able to see cars behind me. And if anyone's driving crazy, hopefully I can get out of the way. At least I have a better chance with this. This next up is I think everyone's favorite part of bike touring and that's picking out the clothes. For off the bike shoes, I went with a sandal option. These are called Keen uh, CNX and it's just like a regular Keen, um, which are usually a beefier kind of sandal on the toe, except these are, I guess, like the light edition of those. Um, so as you can see, it's less beefy, but still has that same structure as a Keen sandal. For my actual riding shoes, I went with a pair of specialized mountain bike shoes that I just got at my local bike shop. Um, these were on sale 
and they're pretty cool. They, they look like a regular tennis shoe, um, except they just have this SPD clip. And so I can clip in on my pedals, um, but if I need to jump off the bike and run into a gas station, convenience store, just something I wanna go take a picture of, I don't have to have those clunky feeling bike shoes. Next up uh, is another piece of footwear, I guess. Um, these are toe warmers. Um, this is just a brand off Amazon called Rock Bros. And they make some pretty affordable bike packing slash bike touring gear. So if you're on a budget, Rock Bros is definitely a cool brand to check out. Um, I've worn these before on a ride and they definitely cut the wind just enough to where you're not freezing your, uh, your toes off. Moving into shirts uh, and jerseys. Starting off, I just have this Pearl Izumi uh, regular riding jersey and it has three pockets on the back and Pearl Izumi is just solid, man. Like every single one of their jerseys just feels good. It's not itchy or uncomfortable. And uh, yeah, I gotta have one of these. Um, this is more of like my hot weather riding piece. Uh, it's another Pearl Izumi, but it's a tank top. Um, same sort of idea, three pockets in the back, super light, ventilating, and it's got a uh, little zipper right here that can you know, let wind in on those hotter days. Um, for my two, like, I guess riding shirts, but more just casual shirts, I went with uh, the Arcteryx Skyline long sleeve uh, and the Arcteryx Skyline short sleeve. And so these are both just super well-made shirts. I mean, if you know about Arcteryx, they're, they're quality, man. It's just, you can feel it as soon as you put it on. And they have a great use section on their website. So uh, if you ever need a nice piece of gear, but you know, the price is just too much, brand new. A lot of these companies do used gear because their stuff is so well-made that it's meant to go the distance in life. And um, some people want to get the new stuff, so they send back their lightly used ones. Um, but yeah, I like this just so much because it's breathable, it feels light, and it's compact, plus it just looks good. Moving on to pants and tights and shorts. Um, start you guys off with these. These are the Pearl Izumi Thermal Tights. And these right here are going to be for those colder mornings when you're in the saddle and you just kind of need something to keep your legs warm until, you know, the day gets a little bit better. Uh, I went with these. Yeah, got them used on, I think, gear trade. So, gear trade, man. Get all your stuff used if you can. You can save a ton of money. Like a pair of casual joggers. Um, it's an Amazon brand. Uh, let's see, For You Cycling. So, yeah, these were like 30 bucks, but... There's some good joggers to throw on and they got like a thermal lining on the inside. Um, so I think these will be good just for casual days off the saddle. You know, it's a little bit cooler, but you want to kind of look like a regular person and not some hardcore cyclist. Uh, these are a great option. Uh, next up are my two shorts. Um, I went with Pearl Izumi, just kind of, they look like casual khaki shorts but they have that like really nice, like athletic feel to them. Uh, and they got plenty of pockets. So if you just need to jump off and put your phone or your camera, your wallet running into a store, um, they definitely have that capability to them. Um, these ones right here uh, are just Columbia PFGs. Um, I, I like to go for these shorts that have that like kind of stretchy material to them. I've just found that those dry the best and just feel the most comfortable on the bike for me, uh, especially if I'm wearing just a regular kind of short on a bike, I want it to be comfortable because, you know, you're in a saddle for five to eight hours every day. You know, you want what you're wearing to feel super comfortable and these just kind of do it for me. Let's see, moving on to headgear. I pretty much have four things that I use for my headgear. First is the Smart Wool Beanie. Uh, it's merino wool, so it doesn't stink very much. Um, super warm to throw on your head if you're just on like a cooler morning or hanging out at camp. You know, head feels super duper cold. You just throw this guy on, it's super light. It's awesome. Uh, this is just a fleece thing that you can just kind of throw over. If you're starting out in the morning, you want to feel cool. You want to be 
warm. This is it right here. Um, next up, I have my cycling hat, which is just another Rock Bros item. Um, again, like Rock Bros, super affordable biking gear. This was like 10 bucks. Um, but yeah, it's just a little cap you can throw underneath your helmet to keep all the sweat out. Uh, and it's ventilates, holds your hair back. I got long hair, so <clears throat> having something to hold my hair back is perfect. <laughs> this is one of my favorite items. And I wear it in so many different situations, but it's a buff. Um, this one's merino wool, so doesn't stink a whole lot, but you can just throw it on as a headband and it's amazing. I love it. Uh, you can wear it around your face and the mask for places that still require that, um, whatever. And it does so much, keeps the sun off your head. Three pairs of darn tough socks that I have. Um, that's pretty much all you need for a bike tour because you're wearing the same pair of clothes so often that three socks is suitable for a month to a years of bike touring. So, and then I have a light little pair of riding socks that have uh, some pretty cool little chain logos on them. So those are my socks. Undergarments, I use these um, padded briefs um, for long days in the saddle. Having something like this saves you from getting saddle sores, just being super uncomfortable. Um, and they kind of have that athletic brief fit. So two pairs of those. Um, and then I have some other just like Nike Pro kind of underwear that are good, don't rub. Um, for gloves, for the colder days, I have, just, like if I'm going through a mountain pass and it's freezing, cold hands are just the worst. So I just got a pair of like outdoor research mittens, kind of like regular snowboarding mittens. Um, and then for cooler days where you're just kind of, you know, chilling, I got these just regular old off-brand bike gloves that have pads right here so keep your hands comfortable and not numb my jacket um i went with the arcteryx cerium lt down jacket it's 850 fill goose down and i mean it's super light it's got a hood on it kind of balls up into nothing and it's just a super good looking jacket arcteryx stuff just fits me very well i like their gear a lot Let's see next up my rain jacket, so that's important. Forgot about my rain gear. Arcteryx Zeta, um, lightweight. Um, another Arcteryx piece, and man, if you just want something that's gonna go the distance, um, something you only have to buy once and not worry about for another 10, 20 years, Arcteryx is just the way to go. Uh, this jacket is super lightweight, super waterproof. It's got Gore-Tex, it's amazing. Another piece of rain gear is my Outdoor Research Helium Rain Pants. Um, these things are amazing, super lightweight, uh, really affordable too, they were like $80, um, $90, and REI had a sale on them, so I went ahead and snagged those, but yeah, Outdoor Research Helium. Um, they have this right here, so if you need to you know, get your leg out without taking off your shoes, you can do that. Uh, or if you just need to vent a little air in there, they're perfect for that too. But last thing you want, man, is to be soaked on a bike tour and just be totally uncomfortable. So that's my rain gear. So getting to the last section of this bike touring gear video, um, we have electronics and electronics are one of those items that you don't really need on a bike tour because you're out there to see nature. You're out there to see what the world kind of has to offer. And so electronic can sometimes take away from that, but there are a few exceptions. So I'm gonna go over what those are for me. Um, and start it off, it's a Amazon Kindle. And these things are awesome because they hold a charge for like, I don't know, it feels like several days um, because they don't really have a backlight. They're just these like, I don't know, like black and white looking, I think this is the Amazon paper white. So. Anyway, whatever you call this um, kind of lighting, uh, it lasts forever. And being able to read at night um, is awesome because it's just a great way to unwind. It's kind of what I do to get in that mode where I'm ready to sleep. Next up is a bike GPS. I use a Garmin Edge 520 or 530, um, my bad. This thing is awesome. It's got, uh, let's see if I can show you guys real quick. 
It's got a lot of great options for tracking. You know, you can track all of your ride stuff right here. It's got a really simple interface to follow. So there's not a huge learning curve when you're figuring out how to use it. You have different courses you can load onto your, onto your Garmin. Uh, this is the first day of our bike tour um, loaded on there. And so it's perfect. Uh, being able to track where you're at, if you don't have any GPS signal on your phone or no internet, um, it'll help you get, get out of a <laughs> place you don't need to be at. So that's the Garmin. Uh, second up would have to be AirPods. Um, for me, being able to listen to some music uh, is awesome. You know, you just pop them in your ear and you have a hands-free device that you can talk, talk with on your phone or third, third up. Yeah. Charging block. Um, this is a RAV power four port charging block. Next up is another, you know, battery source, battery pack. Whenever you are kind of away from civilization for a few days, you know, maybe you're going through Yellowstone and you just don't really want to have to go into town to charge your stuff up. Um, this is a Mophie 20,000 milliamp power brick, and it's got the lightning charge port on there, a few USB charge ports. Uh, next up would be my camera. Um, I just carry a little point and shoot camera. Um, it is a Canon G9X, and it's really good uh, for pretty much everything you would need on a bike tour. Um, look, there's me looking back at you. It is... I think up to like 1080p uh, quality, and you can get some really good pictures, good video with it, uh, without you know carrying a full DSLR camera setup like a Canon EOS R or something ridiculously heavy. You need batteries for your camera, so I always go with Wasabi Power uh, batteries. They make really solid ones. You can get a rechargeable USB charging port. Um, for their charger, which is great. Uh, and I got my little SD card wallet uh, that goes along with the camera. That's pretty much all my electronics. The only thing you're not seeing is my phone, which is an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, and it's just using to record this, so I can't show it to you guys. But yeah, those are all my electronics. All right, guys, this is what I use to carry all my electronics in. It's just a simple little bag that unfolds like this, and you have everything you need right in there so it's perfect for holding everything and it just fits nice into a pannier um, for organizing so it's perfect but yeah I just wanted to see show you guys how I store all that um, because your electronic gear is pricey and you want to take care of it all right guys thank you so much for sticking around for this entire bicycle touring gear list uh, this is everything that I'm bringing and everything you need for a bike tour is subjective you can always go less expensive on the spectrum or more expensive. That's the beauty of bike touring is anyone can do it and there's no exact way to pack. There's no exact thing to buy. Everything is based on preference. Um, how comfortable you wanna be or how uncomfortable you wanna be. That is so cool, it's all up to you. Um, our tour starts on April 1st, 2021. So just wanted to give you guys this video as a little piece of content, kind of a heads up to maybe subscribe to the channel and you can keep up with our entire bike tour. We'll be starting in Astoria, Oregon, finishing in uh, Yorktown, Virginia. So it's a 4,228 mile ride um, and it's just a beast of a ride. But me uh, and my friend, we are excited for it. Um, we think that everything is just gonna go perfectly as planned. Um, and by that, I mean that there is no plan and there's nothing perfect about it. So um, we're going to do our best just to stay optimistic, um, stay excited. So, yeah, we roll out here in just under two weeks and we look forward to keeping you guys up with everything that we can while we're out there. So uh, feel free to subscribe and look out for more content. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.